Hello everybody, you don't know me, but I'm the guy who edited the Star Trek Playmates action figure videos. And in this special presentation, I'm going to show you how I did it. So how I got involved with this project, I'm a very good friend with a guy called Aaron Challenger who runs his own collectible store here in Australia. As it turns out, James Patrick is also a good friend of Aaron's as well. James had told Aaron that he was keen on making a documentary series based around the 1990 Star Trek action figure line from Playmates. Aaron arranged it for James and myself to meet up and it all went from there. So when it comes to Star Trek, somewhat ironically I don't collect any merchandise whatsoever. However, I am a member of Austrek, which is a Star Trek fan club of Victoria, which I joined back in 1984, a full 40 years ago. As it turned out, they made me a life member of Austrek back in 2016, and I'm still currently responsible for writing the club's history on the website. When it comes to creating the actual documentary, the first thing that occurs is James will script out the episode and send it to me for review. Once we've completed any additions or updates, James will then send me a copy of the script featuring all the image thumbnails. This is an important part of the process as I need to know what pictures are intended to support the narration in the edit. When it comes to the actual high res images, quite often James will send me different photos of the same action figure so I have some variety to work with. As part of my preparation work, images of action figure packets not only have their backgrounds removed, but are straightened up to remove tapering from how they were photographed. By doing this, I have far greater freedom when it comes to animating the individual images later on. One down, 39 to go. Well, it's crunch time. With a brand new project in Premiere and a completely blank screen, by the time this video is finished, this entire area is just going to be chock full of stuff. But for now, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to get started. The very first task is to insert all the images into the timeline as per James's guide. By default, each image will be five seconds in duration. With that task completed, next up I'll create a temporary and somewhat crude audio recording of the script, just to get an idea of what shots will go where and how long they will appear on screen. It's of a Borg Queen figure for the movie First Contact, further irritated fans. When it comes to the temp track, what I'm attempting to do is record my dialogue at the same speed that I think Tash will read her narration later on. If all goes well, I'll be able to insert her narration track straight over the top of my dialogue track and it will just sync with all the images. Once the recording is complete, I'll insert it into the timeline, which means the next phase is about to commence, the assembly edit. The assembly edit is when I start shrinking down all the shots to try and match with the dialogue without knowing in advance what will fit and what won't. It's the most arduous task of the entire production, but at least by the end of it, I should get an idea of how the whole thing is meant to flow. It may have taken a few days, but we now have an assembly edit, otherwise known as a rough draft, that we can work with using the audio track that I recorded. Not only had they produced figures, but also ships, play sets, bases, tricorders and communicators. Even at this point, I can see where there are too many images for some areas and not enough images for others, and as to be expected, there are some gaps. But it's still a good starting point for when Tasha's narration gets inserted later on. In addition, one of my other tasks is to fix the action figure photographs which aren't wide enough to fit on the screen. I'll do this by extending the width of the background to compensate. So today is a very significant day for the production because Tash is coming over to record the narration. Normally I'd get her to read the script twice. The first time is just to get the bugs out of the system and to vocalise all of the words that just appear on the page. So it's the second take that I'll really be focusing on. Owing to the large production runs of most characters, these figures are still relatively affordable, more than 20 years after the line's cancellation. One of the possible issues we might have with the recording today is because we're not in a studio, we're at the mercy of outside noises, such as birds, passing cars and even aeroplanes. For the first time, 
sculpting of this figure was outsourced to a well-respected design studio, Art Asylum. Holy. Wait. Sorry, that was the kid. Was <laughs> no, it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> Freaking <laughs> the, the cat meowed. <laughs> She's Louise. After editing Tasha's audio and inserting it into the timeline, I discover that her narration is actually two minutes longer than mine. So clearly some adjustment is now required, but the good news is, with the proper narration now inserted, the show already looks and sounds so much better. Not only had they produced figures, but also ships, playsets, phasers, tricorders and communicators. Although James's images are critical to the show's success, ultimately everything hinges on how good it sounds. If the narration is too fast, people will struggle to understand and absorb what they're being told. Alternatively, if it's too slow, they'll start to tune out and lose interest. In the end, it's a delicate balancing act just trying to get it all right. So I've now completed what I think is the final edit of Tasha's narration. Allowing for chapter titles and intentional pauses, the whole thing now runs for 16 minutes. The problem is I'm still stuck with all these pesky gaps where I have no images to support the narration. Product manager Chris Overly publicly admitted to dwindling sales and overwhelmingly negative fan reaction to both the chase figures and the collector-based marketing strategy. As a result, I can do one of two things. I can either ask James for more images, or I can try and find a solution myself. Either way, this is where the head scratching begins. Whilst working on the edit, I'll also start to add motion to the images to make them move, along with adding dissolves and other transitional effects that connect various shots together. Not only will this make the video more appealing to look at, but it also allows me to inject a bit of creativity as well. Collector excitement over this wave was soon tempered by the reveal of another limited edition figure. Pressing a button would trigger the transporter sound effect and simulate the beaming action. And just like that, the first draft is now complete. Even though it took us over a month to do, all the gaps have now been filled and the entire video can now be watched from end to end. But does it work? In some areas, yes, but in some areas, no. Playmates most certainly left an indelible mark on Star Trek fans and collectors. Although the video is in a watchable state, it's still a long way from being ready for viewing by anyone. Currently, many of the details are still missing, such as adding in colored plates for shots with black backgrounds, as well as finalizing all the animation, transitions, and the all important titles. Well, after spending weeks tinkering with the edit, trying to find improvements and enhancements wherever I can, the video portion is now finally finished. Not only had they produced figures, but also ships, playsets, phasers, tricorders and communicators. Now it is time to tackle the audio, and for that I'm going to need headphones, so I can hear everything in detail. Despite being recorded weeks ago, Tasha's narration track has remained pretty much untouched since it was originally edited and inserted into the timeline. However, my task now is to remove any volume peaks and distortion in her voice and to check for any errors. Playmates had charted a tumultuous course over the preceding years. When a peak level is reached, I'll correct it by reducing the volume in the affected area. I'll also fix any unusual noises in the audio, which can even include the sound of Tasha's breath between sentences. Firstly, a last minute change in costumes used for the Star Trek film Generations resulted in an entire wave of figures looking inaccurate to those seen on screen. Not only that, but when I initially edited Tasha's audio, I inserted recorded silence between her sentences to keep the sound levels consistent. So now it's time to check this as well with only 8,000 produced. Packaged with an in-scale ultrasonic neuralizer. Once all that's done, all that's left now is to add the music. 
One of the best things about music is it can be used to hide unfixable problems in the narration recording. In addition, the main music used in all three of the Playmates videos is actually owned by Sci-Fi Zone. In this instance, doomed social worker Edith Keeler from City on the Edge of Forever and Commander Spock from Mirror Mirror. Once the music is added and mixed, the video will finally be ready for its first viewing by James. As for myself, I've still got more to do because now I can start work on the YouTube thumbnail. Well, a few days have passed and James has come back to me with his thoughts and feedback. It turns out a couple of shots needed to be shuffled around, a couple had to be deleted, and a couple of mistakes needed fixing where I had inserted the wrong image into the edit. Overall though, the video itself was really well received, which was the most important thing. Well, after two months, today is a very special day, as James has just signed off and approved the final version of the edit, which means the video is now officially complete. So, there's only one thing left to do now, and that's to release it. Although it wasn't planned, I continued to make changes, enhancements, and even corrections right up to the day of the video's release. My work here is done.